Welcome back to Blizzard Abroad. This is Lunch Break Conversations. Today I want to talk about eight reasons why American society is failing. And I wrote a list here. Now, some of these on this list, you know, they don't need explanation. And then some of them I, I will give my two cents and just my my personal opinion on things. Um, number one is extreme individualism. This dog eat dog, every man for himself, climbing the ladder at the expense of others. You know, it what we see happening is, you know, we're prioritizing self over community, self over family nowadays. You know, everything's about me, 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 what I want, what I need, you know. F everything else. And so what we see is like a lack of community. You know, if you stop and look, you, you can see it. You see it happening in society. Uh, number two is a uh, lack of empathy and compassion. You know, the things that we see going on in America every day, and I'm just going to keep it to America, you know, to not understand the plight of our fellow men fellow woman, fellow American overall. You know, you see people stepping over other people in the streets. You know, just think back to the pandemic to where you had some people hoarding supplies and other people going without. That just highlights the one, the extreme individualism and two, lack of empathy and compassion, you know, the inability to feel the pain of others. Um, number three, impatience and instant gratification culture. You know, we expect immediate results and quick fixes, no long-term vision and unwillingness to persevere. And we see a lot of that, it, it, and there may be many factors that contribute to that. You know, everything is quick. Everything is at at the palm of our hand nowadays. You know, knowledge, wisdom. You know, you go all it all could fit in the palm of your hand nowadays, and we want it fast, so we're not as willing to put in. You know, the work that we used to. You know, used to work step by step to get to a certain goal um nowadays you know everybody wants it now 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 and before everybody jumps and says oh this generation or that generation you know stop and think it's every generation you know they like to say 18 to 80 it's all of us it's all americans you can see it right here at home you can also see it overseas. We have no patience. We have no patience at all. Number four, societal PTSD and collective trauma. And, and it stems from unresolved historical and ongoing trauma. Um, a constant state of heightened anxiety and fear. And we see that every day in America. Um, it's being pushed down our throats. It's on the news. That's why I stopped watching the news because it's constant negativity being pushed down our throat. You know, and I would say that most Americans have some form of PTSD. I don't see how we couldn't. The things we see, the things we deal with on a constant basis, you know, how, when's the last time America was not in a conflict? You know, you can say that, you know, we haven't been in a conflict um, since Afghanistan, but we are involved in conflict around the world. Call it what you want, you know, what's going on in Ukraine? 
what's going on in Gaza. You know, we are involved in that some way, some way. And then what's going on back here at home? The number of, of violent incidents that happen in America for a first world society, you know, for supposedly being the greatest country in the world and the level of violence that we see here every day, it's, I'm not going to say it's unmatched, but we lead the modernized world. And it's getting to the point where it's not shocking. It's, it's not, it's normal. It's normal to hear that. Uh, I don't know the exact number, but over a hundred people were shot in Chicago over, over the 4th of July weekend. That's normal. It doesn't bother anybody. We brush it right off like, like it should be normal, but it's absolutely not normal. You know, and, and I think what's happening now is that we're pushing that fear and anxiety into our children. You know, how could, how could a kid actually go through um, lockdown drills at school, elementary school, and not have some sense of fear and anxiety normalized into their everyday life. You know, where else in the world do they have to go to, to, to elementary school students have to go through lockdown drills, active shooter drills. We, that's become a normal part of American culture. And it's sad. Maybe it's necessary. I'm not saying it's not necessary, but it is sad that it's come to that point. Um, let's go number, number five. The desensitization to violence and suffering, exactly what I was just talking about. Um, it's the oversaturation of graphic content. It's in our movies. It's in our music. It's in social media. It's normal to see violence. We, we see it every day. We deal with it every day. We're desensitized to it, you know. So we, we end up having a reduced emotional response. It's almost like we're becoming immune to it. Does it hurt when it happens, when it hits close to home? It absolutely hurts. But it's to the point now to where, you know, if it's not, if it doesn't affect us um, personally, I don't think it even sticks with us. You know, it, that's the sad part. And, you know, like I just mentioned Chicago, that's a Chicago thing. It's not a Connecticut thing. It's not, you know, even though it, it, I mean, it does happen here, but I'm just making an example of that. You know, well, it doesn't happen in my town. So, you know, that's a Chicago problem. That's a Memphis problem. That's a Milwaukee problem, you know, or, you know, the worst one that honestly, um, that's a, that's a black on black problem. You know, that, that offends me. When I hear that term black on black, because honestly, um, does it happen? Absolutely. But you can't separate uh, black on black from American crime. You know, black Americans are Americans. So it's not a black on black issue. It's an American issue because you can't separate this one group from American culture. You know, my my my. Ancestors have been here 400 to 500 years you know, before there even was a country, the United States of America. You know, so all, all I've ever known is American culture. So how can you separate it out? You can't. You know, it's an American problem. Um, where am I at? One, two, three. So, number six, emotional manipulation for profit. What do I mean by that? You know, it's the explo exploitation of outrage and fear. 
and the clickbait culture. Um, and you see this in politics. You see it on in media, the mainstream media. You see it on social media. You know, you even see it in personal relationships. You know, our, for example, it's uh, rage, rage, uh, rage baiting happens all the time. You know, people will wind you up and, and they know they will post something that they, they may not even believe it, but they know that by posting this um, controversial thing, they're going to get clicks. They're going to get views, you know, and they're and they're they're counting on you to be outraged. And that's where the engagement comes from. I see it a lot on, I don't go on Facebook a lot, um, but I know when I do go on Facebook, I see it there the most because people are just trying to get people to disagree with them, you know, so they'll post something wild, some, some wild take, and then you'll have thousands and thousands of comments, um, of people pushing back and, and they monetize it. Every time you go up there and push back and make a comment on that, you know, they're, they're, they're monetizing it. You see it in politics all the time. You see red against blue. I call it the, the new Crips and Bloods are, are the politicians because it's red and blue, you know, and they know how to whip up a crowd. And to me, I'm looking and I'm like, why do they even throw these rallies? Everybody that shows up to those rallies, most of the time they're already voting for the candidate anyway. There's not many people that are undecided. Um, but they they just go and they, they whip the American people up into a frenzy and then they set them off against each other. Now we end up fighting each other, mad at each other, not being able to even discuss politics because you know it's too controversial. Um, we're scared to even have real conversations. We're scared. They, they have us scared, um, to have real conversations with each other. Like how can we ever collectively hold our politicians accountable if we can't sit down and have a conversation? I believe both sides are crooked. You know, I would never blindly vote for a color red or blue, you know, I vote, I vote for who I believe is best going to serve my interests, my personal interests. Some, you know, most of the time, you know, but we won't even, we don't need to even sit down and have a conversation because you know, we're upset with somebody just because they have different views than us. You know, they're the masters of the politicians are the masters of keeping us divided. And what they do is they they monetize our emotions, you know, and then they wind us up like a little toy, wind us up, and then they set us off and we do their dirty work for them. And that's the way it's, that's the way politics work. Now we're seeing it in media, now we're seeing it on social media, you know. It's always been there in advertisement. It's always been there in advertisement. They've always used your emotions, you know, to get you to buy something. Particularly works better with women than men, but it still wor it works with men also. You know. So let's go with number seven. Um, I'm almost done. Um, oppositional mindsets, and that by that I mean the tendency to stand more against something than to actually stand for something. You know, and I'll go back to politics with this one. I really don't get into politics, but I'll go back to politics with this one because I, I particularly, I personally know people who, no matter what, they're voting against Donald Trump or they're voting against Joe Biden. Well, Joe Biden dropped out, but now they're voting against Kamala. You know, they don't care what the other person stands for. You know, people, I know people that hate Trump. And no matter what, they don't want to see him in there. They don't care what the other side has to offer. They're just voting against Trump. You know, they're voting against Harris now. So 
That's what I mean by, you know, just being more against something than actually standing for something. You know, so that's the mindset that, you know, we as Americans need to get away from all of these things. We need to get away from uh, our society is going to fall if we, if we don't change these things. Now, will, will America still be here? I believe so. You know, I don't, but it won't be the America that we've known or we've been comfortable in, you know, some, regardless of your stance on American politics or societies, you know, a lot of us have been able to be successful. You know, some of us have been able to thrive and be highly successful. You know, some of us that aren't successful have still been able to be held up. You know, they haven't been, you know, our society keeps people from actually hitting rock bottom because we actually have a social safety net there, you know, that won't let um, people actually starve and die from hunger here in America. You know, we have food stamps, we have other social programs, you know, those things are important. I don't think they should be abused, but they are important. That's our society. So that is a good thing about America. Whether you agree with it or not, it's needed. You know, um, the us first them mentality, um, in, in politics, in, you know, societal issues, in media, it's, you know, it's us first them. We're, we're constantly pitted against each other, you know, constantly. And the unwillingness to seek common ground, you know, unwillingness to seek compromise. You know, we're right. We don't care what anybody else has to say. You know, we'll do it our way, but we won't do it at all. You know, you know. <laughs> and then finally, number eight, the, deterior the deterioration of meaningful dialogue and this one is you know, particularly why, why I put it last um, is because it's particularly important to me now that I've you know become now that I'm actually on social media and I'm posting and I'm, I'm honestly consuming too much social media um and i think i'm just seeing a lot more i'm seeing a lot more i'm seeing all the fighting all the bs man that i thought you know especially in the manosphere that you know i thought that i wanted to get away from an actual american society um it's just there, I guess it's just everywhere, you know, and it's sad that, you know, I guess people just tend to seek out echo chambers. They, they only want to hear their own point of view, you know, and a lot of people is, you know, that you're not talking about, you don't feel the same way that I feel. You have a different point of view than I have, you know, people don't want to hear it. It's sad because how do you ever learn something new if you don't give you a chance, yourself a chance to even hear something new, to hear a different point of view? Um, we debate focused on winning, you know, instead of actually learning or actually with the goal of having a, gaining a mutual understanding. You know, we argue, we argue. And a lot of people that have dis disagreements, you know, they don't even seek understanding. You just want to win an argument. You want to get their point across. They're not listening. You know, they're not absorbing um, information. They're just, you know, spitting out talking points, you know, and they just want to win an argument. They don't want to understand what the other person has to say at all, you know. And 
if we're going to continue being like that, then, I, you know, we're never going to get anywhere. We're never going to grow. We're never going to learn anything new. We're going to stay the same. You don't learn anything from, you know, constantly being in the same circle. You need to be expanding our circles. You need to be seeking out information. Trying to learn new things. Now, I had a guy, one of my videos, I had a guy come into my comment section and he said some weird stuff. I didn't understand what he was talking about. And so you know, I actually went over to his channel, not to troll, because I, I genuinely did not understand where he was coming from. He said some, it was just like out of left field. So, you know, I went over to his channel. I didn't troll him. You know, he was doing a live. I came in. Hey, what's up, man? And we had like a little small conversation. You know, now I've been going back to his channel, not every live, but just listening to him. I absolutely do not agree <laughs> with 99% of the stuff he talks about, you know, but just listening to him, I see where he's coming from now. The comment he made on my channel absolutely makes sense, you know, and I'm not mad at him, but I understand him now. And, and, and I learned, I actually learned from listening to this guy, not a lot, but little Jews here and there, little things. I, you know, he says some things that make sense, you know? So, I mean, is he saying anything that I've never heard before? No, but he's saying things that's making me think. We absolutely do not have the same viewpoints, you know, but that doesn't mean I got to go in, into his channel and argue with them. I don't argue with them. I go, I listen, you know, if I learn, so I might comment here and there, but it, it's just, I'm actually, I'm seeking something. And I, I, I want to connect with people that are seeking things too, not just seeking to put others down you know, seeking, like looking to constantly look for, you know, disagreements, because if that's what you're searching for, if you're, if you're searching for problems, you're, you're going to find it, you know, if you look hard enough, you know, and I just think you need to get away from this type of thinking because it doesn't help, doesn't help any of us, you know. The, uh, the last point here was, last bullet point was unwillingness to acknowledge nuance or to change perspectives. You know, speaking in generalities. All this, all that, everyone, this one. <laughs> and the, the perfect way to explain it is to talk about the manosphere. Some of the talking points in the ministry, I totally disagree with, you know, um, and the easiest one to point out is the all women, this all Western women that all, all, I, I don't like that because I know for a fact it's not true. It's easy to, to, to debunk, you know, so it, it, for me, it automatically um, mutes your talking point when you say all of this or all of that. One, you have no way to, of knowing all or most. I think it would be better if we said, you know, shit, if you got that much, if you're that bold, call out the person. <laughs> you know, this person did this to me. Not, you know, I had three ex girlfriends that cheated on me, not me personally, but, you know, so that's why I'm, that's why I'm upset. You know, my wife left me. And took half of everything I had and I can't see my kids. Make it personal then. But don't come out and say all, all of this, all of that. You know, you know, you got the feminists do it too. You know, all men are this and all men are that. It just automatically, you know, debunks whatever talking point in my mind, in my, in my opinion. You know. And then the willingness, 
we have to have a willingness to change perspective because none of us are perfect. None of us knows everything in the world that there is to know. You know, as long as you're living, you're gonna you're going to learn something new. You're gonna see new things, you're gonna have new experiences. There's nothing wrong with changing your perspectives. You should change your perspectives. None of us thinks the same way we did 20 years ago. I don't think the same, I don't have the same ideas, I don't have the same experiences I, I, that I had when I was 20 years old. You're not supposed to. We're growing, we're learning, we should be seeking more. So it's all right to change your perspectives if, if you're actually learning something. You know, in the short time that I've been on YouTube, I've had, I've changed my perspectives about things, you know. So that's the lunch break conversation for today. <laughs> time to punch back in, get back to work. Um, let me know what you think in the comment section. You know, these are my eight reasons why American culture is failing, why it will fail and will continue to fail if we don't start to change these things. And like I said, I'm not trying to go up against the system. You know, I'm not trying to change everybody's mind. You know, I'm just up here giving my opinion, what I see, what I've experienced, you know, and hopefully I'll reach a couple people, you know, and, and just get you to stop and think for a second. You know, we can't keep going the way we're going. We can't. It's too toxic. You know. And that goes for, I think these, these points could, could be, um, these points could be, um, applied to a lot of different situations in our life. It could be applied to politics. They could be, um, applied to the way we conduct ourselves on social media. It could be applied to, uh, uh personal relationships. You know, like I said, these are just my opinions, you know, like them, don't like them, you know, I'm just a regular guy. I'm just a blue collar guy that, you know, <laughs> and I had one guy tell me, you know, they never take me serious, you know, because until I show my, uh, four year psychology degree and, um, I get 1,000 subscribers, so hopefully you'll help me get to at least a thousand subscriber um, part of that. But you don't need it. You don't need a degree, you know, to recognize um, the issues that we have here in America. You just gotta live. You just gotta keep your head, keep your eyes open, and keep your head out of your ass, and you'll see what's going on here. You know, it's not rocket science. You know, so let me know what, what you think down in the comments. Love it, hate it. Um, I just want to start a conversation. You know, agree, disagree. Let me know. You got more points that you that you think we should be talking about? Let me know in the comment section, and and maybe I'll you know maybe maybe you'll teach me something. You know, because I'm just out here trying to learn myself. Um. So until next time, this is Blizzard Abroad.